good morning. I trust that all is well and in your favor and that you're enjoying the fact that you're in the land of the living and that you're going to be okay because with life there is hope. I bid you a wonderful Sunday morning, wishing you all the best for the rest of the week and I encourage you to remember that with life, with life all things are possible. I know you haven't heard from me in a while with the word of God, but don't worry. I don't just pass on the word because I feel like. Let's worship. I pass on the word based on inspiration. And pity I don't know all the words. I'll hasten to, 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 to his throne. Shall we sing? Hey, do you love the Lord? Hey, I, I love the Lord. I surely do. I surely do love the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, and pity. And pity. Let's worship God, eh? Run. The kitchen is open today. Long as I live, long as I live, my troubles rise. Seems too busy for me. I'll hasten to his throne. Where do you need to go? Hasten to, hasten to his throne. Don't give up, don't give in. Just hasten, I'm gonna run to. Well, it's a wonderful Sunday. Let's worship. Finding the right song. DJ Dakka. I. Music. For those who were at the church this Sunday, God bless you. I didn't go. There's nothing wrong with you going either, eh? What is your reason behind going? Is it to gossip about people? To outdress one another? You are here Moving in this place I worship you I worship you 
worship you. You are here working in the, the, this place. I worship you. Good morning, the baby. I worship you. Simone Murray, good morning. How are you doing? You are here. Rick Lewis. Tanya Copin. Selena Sitar. Jillian Bess Hamilton. Rachel Khalil. Kyla, sorry. Mindy Kroll. You are here. Selena and all the others too late. Let's worship God. Because God doesn't want anything else from you but to worship Him, reverence Him. He doesn't want anything else from you and it's hard to do sometimes. You, guess why? Here I worship. Because you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Who is He to you? He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. God, you're here, touching every life and every heart. I worship you. Worship. I worship you. You are. Every heart, every heart that's broken, healing God. And that's why we worship you because you are the greatest healer. Hear why, hear why, hear why. You are here. Turning lives around. It's not what you were, it's who you are and what you will become. Because God says, I, your God, know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper for you. Plans to ensure that no harm comes your way and plans to ensure that you guarantee the future so those that are thinking that you don't have a future chef you hey hey we make a miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are hey we make a miracle worker promise Broken heart, you're the answer to it all, Jesus. You wipe away all my tears, you mend my broken heart. You're the answer to it all, to it all, Jesus. A promise keeper. Everybody lied to you. Everybody promised you the moon and the stars and all they did was sell you dreams. I can tell you about the promise keeper. He makes a way when there seems to be none. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are Hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of you don't understand why I worship. I worship because God has brought me through a lot. He still got a lot of more to do on me. Could have been dead many times, but here I am. You could have been dead too, but here you are. Let's worship. Good morning, am I? Syria Job, good day. How are you doing, Deborah Ferreira? Let's worship the Lord today. Worship Him in spite of your situation. We are a chosen generation. We've been called for to show His excellence. All our requirements.
wire for life God has given me and I know who I am We are a chosen generation Call for to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me Cause I know who I am I know who God says I am Where He says I am Where He says I'm at I know who I am I know who God says I am Where He says I am Where He says I'm at I know who I am I'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor I know who I am I'm walking in power I'm walking in miracles I live a life of favor I know who I am We are a chosen generation Who are forth to show God's excellence all that I require for life, God has given me. And I know who I am. Hey, do you know who you are or whose you are? The situation will not get to you for all times. It will get to you, yes, but we are a chosen generation. We've been called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. And I know who I am. We are a chosen generation We've been called for to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me And I know who I am I know who God says I am What He says I am Where He says I'm at I know who I am Do you know who you are? If you don't I want to tell you what God says you are. A chosen generation. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of labor. I know who I am. Good morning, Uncle Randy. How you doing? I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm coming in a minute.
Wonderful, yes, he is. Let's worship. Let's worship. If you don't know who you are, here's an opportunity for you to find out who you are. Worship God, that's all he wants. It doesn't matter what you've done, who people say you are, what people say you are, right? Here's what God says you are. Worship. Chosen generation, we've been called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation, we've been called for to show His excellence. Hey, hey, all I require for life. God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what He says I am, where He says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Are you? Do you know who you are or who you are? I know who I am. We are a chosen, come on. We are a chosen generation. We can call for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are a 
chosen generation will be called for to show His excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who God says I am, what He says I am. something and it is not moving away, don't ask God to move it. Ask Him to give you the strength to go through it because it might be that thing that will be raising you to another level. If you want to walk away, let them walk. As T.D. Jake says, your future is not tied to anything that wants to leave. Let it go. Let it go. That might have been the way it's holding you back and holding you down all the time. Let it go. Let's worship. Yeah. 
going in the bed. It's after 11. Get up. Get up. Get up and worship. Stop worrying. You're worried for too long. It's time for you to stop worrying. Start worshiping. Get up. Don't die while you're alive. Die when it's time for you to die. Now is not the time yet for you to die. It's time for you to get up out of bed. Get up out of that bed. Get up. You can do it. You can do it. Get up. Get up. Now put the pillows where they're supposed to be. Pull the bed sheet the way it's supposed to be pulled. Pull back the curtains. Let the sunlight come in and hit you. Yeah. Get rid of all the darkness in your life. Clean that bedroom. Totally clean it. Clean it. Clean it. Come on. Fold them clothes in the chair that they got for now. Fold them. Fold them up. Find a proper spot for them. It's time for you to raise up. Rise up from that which you're allowing yourself to fall into a deep depression. No medication can help you there. Only God can help you. And you've got to express or show the will to want to get out of your depressed state, your stressed out state. Get up. Oh dear, baby. Off. And worship. Worship. God will give you the strength. God will give you the strength. Come on, beloved. Get up out of that bed. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Get up. Just say, Father, guard up my legs. In my down sitting, God, help me to rise up. And in my uprising, God, give me strength in my knees. Put life back into my nerve, heart, and sinew. Dear God. Say, Father, Father, only you and I know what I'm feeling. Others don't understand, so they cannot conclude properly. But I know that you understand, God, and you can help me out of this. Yes, of course, you can say. Get on your knees. Pull the bed with all your pains. Pull the sheet. Pull the sheet. Pull the sheet from over your head. Pull it off. Jesus. If there's no other name you can call, call that name. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, do it, Jesus, say it, say it, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Father, give me the strength, get up off your bed, get up, get up, even if you gotta hold on, get up off the bed, no more lying down, it's time for your daughter. Come out of your down sitting and get into your uprising. Get up. That situation doesn't have you. You have the situation, but the situation does not have you. The illness that the doctor said that you're suffering from, yes, you're suffering from it. But it is not you, beloved. It is not you. It is not you. You have it. It does not have you. It does not have you. I saw a woman yesterday. I went to get some money, some money ground to do some stuff. And a woman was there and she was calling for 40 different tablets to say, Hey mom, come! She was like, up and I said, I see your lips dry. And from what I've heard in your conversation, you're diabetic. And you're taking it on to the point of wanting to die. No, it is not the end of your life, sweetie. It's the beginning of a new start in your life. For the rest of your life, you've got to determine how you're going to move forward with that which the doctor has said that you have. The doctor says that you have it. They didn't say it have you. You have it. HIV, cancer, corona and all. This is not just a religious conversation. This is me telling you that the giver of life is still giving life. The giver of body is still giving out of and because you are still in the land of the living. This is what a test. Miracle, Sir, ma'am, boy, girl, auntie, uncle, grandma, it ain't over till God says it is over. Because you've reached your end in your opinion. But that is when you need to hold on to that which has been sustaining you. As Tasha Cox is saying, all things are possible in the name of Jesus. So you might say, who is Jesus? Just another man. But he has worked for me wonderfully. And I'm telling you, he can work for you too. You can work for you too. You don't have everything together. But guess what? You've got life. I want you to got life and you've got hope within your bones. You will be okay. Eventually. One step at a time. Small step. 
going step. The first one is get on the top bed. Get on the top bed. Get up. Sit up. Slide off the bed. Sit on the floor. But come out of that bed. And use that bed now to pull you up. Pull you up. Time to stop lying down. You've been lying down for too long. God has not given up on you or you would have been dead all day. Get up. Get up out of that bed. Bless you. Get up. Holy. Let's worship. Let's worship. It's a privilege to worship you. Pretend you're in a dance and you're, you're dancing with one that you love. Worship God the same way with that kind of love. Like your first love. Remember the first kiss you had? Well, it's time for you to get back to the basics of your first love. The first person you fell in love with. But God has not stopped loving you. So you need to stop not loving God but start loving Him more. He is not giving up on you. Don't give up on him, beloved. Don't give up. It will work out in time. It will work out. It will work out. With a grateful heart, just lift your hands and say, God, you are God. And whatever this is that I'm going through is what for a season. Give me the strength to go through so that I can come out and be a testimony to others. Come to testify even though I'm going through it. Talk to God like that and say, God, I know with you all things are possible. And so I'm waiting and kneeling and depending on you. But as I'm waiting, I will worship and stop worrying. Stop worrying and start worship instead. Worship, worship. Worship, beloved, worship, worship. That is all that God requires of us. To worship Him and give Him glory and honor. And thank Him for His goodness towards you. You ain't got to do nothing else. It's not like a hard medication you got to take. Worship. Worship God. That is all that He requires of you. Worship. Worship. It doesn't matter what you've done. What people say you've done, what people remember that you have done, it doesn't matter what people say who you are, you just have to remember that you've got to give God glory for being able to stand against all the wiles and talks of the enemy. Say, devil, no more. No more. No more. I will worship you. It's my heart. If I'm going down, I'm going down worshiping, and that is how you gotta go. Talk to God. Say, God, I am here to worship you. In my current situation, I'm not going to wait for it to get better. I'm going to worship you until it gets better. And even after it gets better. Remember in the Bible there was a story of one who said, I'm going to hang on to you until you bless me. That's what you got to do if you feel like there's no way out. Say, Father, I'm hanging on to you. I'm holding fast to you. And I will allow you to run wherever you want, Father. But I am not losing you because I know that you don't really want to lose me. So God, I'm holding on to you. Say it now, Father. In spite of my situation, I'm going to hold on to you. And whatever your will is, that is what will be done. But I will worship you even to the end. And so you got to go, beloved. Go. Just be grateful for the fact that you're in the land of the living. You're covered fear, but that is temporary. Your pocket broke, that is temporary. You all people, that is temporary. But all you need to do is give God the gratitude for allowing you to continue to live through all that you're going through at this time. Worship, 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 worship. Father, you reign. Father, you reign in every situation. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. I don't 
know about tomorrow, but today, God, great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Great are you. situation, your every position, your every experience, just worship God. Learn to say hallelujah in spite of, in spite of, say hallelujah and mean it. Say God, your will not mine, your will not mine, your will not mine, your will not mine. I will worship you, for there is none like you. You are the first, the last, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the I am that I am, the El Shaddai. <laughs> yes, He is great. Proclaim, declare, announce it, sing it, shout it. Lord, you reign. Lord, in this situation, have your way. In this situation, God, that only you and I know about, have your way. Have your way. I know that even this is temporary, God. Everything that is coming against is temporary. But I know when you decide to restore and restoration, time is near. That I will be okay. Let's worship God. Get on your knees. Get on your knees and worship. Don't ask God for nothing. Just worship. Say, God, I just want to worship you. And I want to thank you for life. Because with life, anything else is possible. Get on your knees and say, Father, I thank you for life. I thank you for life. And I know that with life, all things are possible. And it's only because of you that I am still in the land of the living God. Hey, you have nothing to praise God about. You're alive. On your job. In the home. In your education. Praise. In your family. When you were called the black sheep, 
worship God. You got a testimony? Pray. You ain't got a testimony? Pray. Give God prayers because He's great. Great and greatly to be prayers. That's what you need to do. Fiona Glasgow, Seresti Grant, good morning to you. Bless you. Domicia Thomas, God bless you. Cordell Johnson, God bless you. Carol Braffitt, Braithwaite. Ashanti Graves Andy, God bless you. Tracy King, God bless you. Nicola Warrell, my sister, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Desiree Edwards, God bless you. Simone Grant, Sunshine Tullock. Floyd Prince. Floyd Prince. I don't know what it is. But you've got a war going on in your mind. It's more a mind thing. And the enemy wants to control your mind. In that situation that you're in right now. The sky isn't falling. The sky isn't falling. The sky isn't falling, Floyd Prince. Unfed worry soon dies of starvation. It's time for you to put away the worry that you've been worrying, Floyd. Put away the things that you've been worrying about. Remove them from your mind. Let it stop occupying your mind. And instead, instead of worrying, worship. God, I don't know what is going on, but I know that you said that you require a worshiper. You also, God, said that you have not given me a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. And so, therefore, I come before you, kneeling and believing that you will wash away and wipe away and remove that which is causing me to be uneasy at night. And in the daytime, great are you, Lord. Say, great are you, Lord, and continue to worship. Worship. Floyd, you are not God. You've been doing too many things as if you were God. But God is a jealous God. Hence why you've got all the trauma in your head right now. Get it out of your head. By ultimately and absolutely deciding and declaring that I, Floyd Prince, am not God. And so God, I can't do anymore. I'm now putting it all in your hands and in your care. Yes, they expect me to be macho and be in control of everything as I normally am. But God, I am broken. They don't know it. But with you, I know that you are the greatest mender. So you will mend that which is broken. Put together the pieces all over again. Potter, I am the clay. And I've been playing the potter all and in and of myself. But I am but your creation. You are the creator. And so I come back to you after trying on my own to fix my situation. And I am coming to you, say Floyd. Say Floyd Prince. I am coming to you now as a broken clay. Placing myself in your hands. To do with me what you may. Amen. Hallelujah. Simone Hercules, God bless you. Tishana de Young, bless you. Nicola Sanford, bless you. Don't stop doing that which you're doing. You've been a light to many. You've walked the walk so you can talk the talk boldly. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Yes, they want to come into your entire file of all the things that you used to do. And they know your life better than you, but they don't know that God is the one who created you. And he had you go through all that you went through so that you can be able to be a witness too. And an encourager and an encouragement and an inspiration to others that would have fallen along the same path. You've walked that path so that you can now stand and declare, <laughs> you don't know my story. You knew a story about me, but that was then. I'm in my now, working on my future. And guess what? My future looks bright because God did not give up on me when others did. Nicola Sanford, let them know that God did not give up on you when others did. And he was preparing you for a time such as this so you can speak into the lives of others and motivate them to do the things that which they're supposed to be doing because you've walked the road so you can talk from experience, Nicola Sanford. Be you not afraid that you were chosen by God for this particular time and period and for this particular purpose that you think that you are not born for. You were born for, yes, you got a job and all that, but your job is more than just that which you have been tied down to. You've been helping people with various situations, but now it's time for you to step out on God. And all the things that you have dreamed about will now come to be because God is restoring your faith in Him. The file that they had is just a file. That's all that it is for history. But if they didn't know how you walked your walk before and see how you were able to come through all of that to be the woman that you are today, Nicola, you could not have done it without God. Hence, you are the best and perfect testimony. Remember the story of the whore? I call her a whore, but she was a woman with many husbands, Nicola Samford. 
Mary Magdalene. Google her. Read her life story. You'll see yours right in there. You've been through it. And people are judging you. They were and they still are judging you. And there are times when you want to lash out. Nicola. But since God to you in this hour, minute, time, and second. That it's time for you to show them that you are the example of Mary Magdalene. Who will speak. Speak into the lives of others. And tell them about God's goodness in your life, Nicola. How he has brought you a mighty long way. From tabletop and tea back to lawyer, counselor, guide, mother, friend, mother to many that you did not make. It's not by chance that that happened to you, darling. All that you had to go through so that you can grow through and be a bigger testimony. I see you in the walls of government one day. And you will be able to walk the streets. Grassroots because you've been in the trenches all your life. God is raising up a different generation, a chosen one, and you are in the chosen land. Nicola Stanford. Don't worry about what people say. If you answer them, you're allowing their seed to, to germinate in your life. Let them call you what they want. Just don't answer. Until you would have gone to that place where you're with God in such a way that you can be able to say. You can be able to say, hey, yes, those were the things that I did, not what I do. Those were the things that I did, not what I do. You weren't there when God found me. You didn't feel what I felt when he said, hey, everyone else has given up on me. But you haven't. You get the strength. And when that book comes out, we'll be waiting to read it. It will be a bestseller. The first guy needs to go to the level with that book. Other guy needs have done other things with books. But that book that you're going to write, Nicola Stanford, when it hits the stands, your story will be one that will be the kind that movies are made. Bless you, Nicola. Bless you, Ingrid Glasgow, Nicosi London, God bless you. Rose Braffitt, Gail Melanie, and Cromwell Barker, good morning, God bless you. Shawane Johnson, God bless you. Gillian Best Hamilton, God bless you. Felisa Lamb, Felisa Lamb, good morning, bless you. Wendy H. Barnwell, God bless you. Monica Jack, Joseph London, God bless you. Selector A Countryman, bless you. Nick Siram, God bless you. Yes, Cassandra Cameron and all the others, Cindy Otker, God bless you. 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 Cillian Daniels, a battle that you're going through at present is one that only God can fix. Stop being God and let God do it. Don Henry, Blessings, blessings, blessings. Glenford Young, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. God bless all of you. Shall we pray now? Penny Jordan, Seresti Grant, shall we pray? Shall we pray? It's almost lunchtime, so let's do this quick. Yes, Nicola, the things I used to do, I do them no more. But some people, when they get baptized, they say the things I used to do, I do them and more. Yes, when they were gathered around Jesus, they said, after some were there for various reasons, huh? Some were there, like in your life, there are some people that are there, and they give you the impression that they're for you. But they got, you got to understand and be able to discern that some of them are there to entrap you, some are there to embarrass you, some of, the, some of them are there to steal your dream, and some are there in the few minority are there because they genuinely believe that God has blessed you and then they want to learn how to be blessed and so they're there and they want to learn the ways that you are living by so that they too can be blessed the way that they're supposed to be blessed. And so a whole heap of people went around Jesus in a time when some were um, contemplating how to get rid of him and others were contemplating how to steal his blessings, how to question him as a person who is 
like God, Emmanuel in the flesh, God is with us. But nonetheless, they were all there from different strata of society and they all wanted to ask one question and they did. They said, teach us how to pray. And he said, when you pray, you should say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but God, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you listen good to that prayer, it dealt with a lot of things. It spoke about him knowing that their enemies wronged and about him. But he still prayed for his enemies. He knows that they were some there and with, hoping to entrap him with what he was going to say in his prayer. But he prayed for them anyhow and he forgave those that trespass against us. Even as, I, uh, even as forgive us, you are, he's asking, God, forgive me of the things that I've done that are bad. Even as I forgive those that are here to hurt me, that are there and have been there hurting me all along, help me to forgive them, help me to erase those things. So that you can erase those things that I have within me also. And he made sure that everyone knew that his father is in heaven. And his name is the name above all names that's worthy to be prayers. And that his kingdom is the kingdom that will come. And that ultimately whatever happens, it will be according to his will. On earth for me. As it is in heaven. My body is a sinful one. Everybody's body is a sinful one. But I mean that you can't talk to God and work on changing those things about you that cause you to be hurt and cause you to hurt others and cause you to be bitter and cause you to, 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 um, uh, to, to walk with people renting space in your head. Domicia Thomas, some people ask me, why is it that you always forgive these people and always talk back to people and this and that and so on? He said greater things than, I've done, than he has done, I'll be able to do. And if he says that, and people have done me all manner of things, I will hug you. I know that you want to stab me in the back, but I will hug you. You want to know why I'll hug you? Because he says 70 times 7. And if I want to live a life that's pleasing to God and gain his favor, then I've got to do what God requires of me to do. You too need to do that. Some people have hurt you. Hurt you real bad. Do you want nothing to do with them anymore? But beloved, if you want God to forgive you, then you need to set aside those things. Forgive yourself first for harboring so much hate. And say, I'm releasing all of these people and things that have been renting space in my head. Because my head is not a boarding place. My head is not a house. It's not an accommodation. So therefore, Remove, boot out, dash away, rip out, tear out, clean house. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your head. No more renting them and pay for the space. We're keeping them in your head for. Get them out of there. Get them out of there. Some people are like, Monday, you are such a fool. How could you allow people to take advantage of you and you still got them wrong? you easy. Those who betrayed Christ were around him and when they had a choice to choose between a man who wanted to, who would want to say, um, not a coup d'etat, let's call it another thing, that wanted to commit the highest act of treason, Barabbas, who wanted to overthrow the government of the day. Barabbas was already imprisoned for planning to start a war and get rid of those in authority because he was a free thinker. But guess what happened? Guess what happened, beloved? After Jesus would have performed all the miracles and done all the nice, kind things, healed the sick, raised the dead, caused the people to see him walk on water, give sight to the blind, the lame, he caused them to walk. He performed miracles, raised the dead after three days of stinkness. 
when they had a choice to choose between Jesus and Barabbas, they betrayed him. But that was all part of God's plan. So beloved, like Domitia Thomas is saying, start walking around the room. Father God, out! You who I hate with a passion because you hate me and I can't remember why I hate you anymore, but I just know that I hate you and I want nothing to do with you. Well, since I can't remember what it is, out! In the name of Jesus. No more free space in my head. No more lodging there. No more boarding up. Can you parent? I hear destroying the house. Out of my head in the name of Jesus. Get out. Say it. Get out. Call the people by the name. Them who make you lose your walk. Dexter Charles. Don't hold them to your heart. God has got this. You see what's going on in the world, Dexter? Don't let people rent space in your head. I ain't no saint. I ain't no preacher, I ain't no bishop, I ain't no pastor, I'm pretending to be one. But today God is telling me to tell you, and I want you to know that he has told you before, if not he's going to confirm it, that it's time you get all them things and people with the renting space in your head, and ain't paying for the rent, they're just squatting out your head. People can say, use an ass after she talking him so much time, and after he do this to you, and after he cuss you out, and after this one thief from you, and so on. You're just getting wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. But you're clearing up this space in Jesus' name. Out of my head. Out of my life. There are some people that you can't cut off because somehow you're tied to them with, with however way. No matter how much you, they do the worst to you, you're, you're still forgiving them and you're holding on to them and you know they can hurt you again. Well, it's time for you to get bold enough to say, I will do this with God's help. Out! In Jesus' name. Get out! And Father, every time I feel, you ever feel, well, y'all ever went in a spot where you, somebody do you so much wrong, but you can't get rid of them? And then sometimes, you know that they're going to hurt you, but you go in again. So you pick up the phone, and you have only their number you remember in your head. And you pick up the phone, and you start dialing the number. And then halfway through, you hang up the phone. That's not you being paranoid. That's you and God working it out. You ain't going crazy. Yes, you dial the number, but soon the answer clicks. Devil, not today. Because as Mohammed Corina said, with, with God all things are possible. So you ain't impossible. Impossible spelt, broken into two words is I'm possible. So those who would have said that you're impossible, let them know correct. But wrong pronunciation. It's not impossible. It's I'm possible, says God. All them people who talk bad about you. Who do this or who do that? I would never talk to she again, and so on and so forth. Why are you allowing them to rent space in your head? Them ain't paying for it. Get it out of your system. Get today, Lord. You never start walking to the door. I forgive them, God, but I'm also releasing them so that you can release me, and you move on from there, Father. I feel in the urge to. I want to tell somebody, I want five minutes from you for tell somebody or the mother make them. Father, hold my tongue. Crack! Not today. Let them feel like they are winning. Sometimes you, in order to win a battle, you've got, in order to win a war, you got to lose the battle. Loose the battle. Loose it where? Into the hands of God. Father, I've been fighting this and this has been hurting me for too long. I am losing the battle now. Over to you. Take it. Because I want to win the war with you, Lord. When you pick up the phone, you start dialing the people number. That you, you, that you know they're going to hurt you. You got to start saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Blah! Me dialing the number no more. And I'm talking from experience. There are some people who think that I cannot live without them. And I used to think so too. Then God woke me up one morning and said, Who is God? Who am I to you? So why is it then that you think that you need to have them other people there that are giving you the most stress and destroying this temple that I place you in for but a season? 
three score and ten maybe. If I am your God, why then are you holding on to these people like if they are your God? Let them go. Forgive them. Get it over with. You understand, beloved? I said in come to preach. But if the Lord said talk the things I shall so do. Because I ain't going to take like some no God. I want, yeah, not today devil, not today. Not today devil. That's it. Next move. Shall we speak over our lives? Because lunch is about to begin in the kitchen. David, who would ultimately become king from a shepherd boy, a lowly shepherd boy, who spent his time writing songs and psalms. David wrote the 23rd Psalm. It says, The Lord, definite article being that there is no other like him. The Lord, not a Lord, is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, which means that I am a sheep. I am being guided by someone who knows the path to get to the pasture so I can eat and even like dung in it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, I will have needs. And he will supply all my needs according to his wish, riches up in glory. And he will give his angels charge over me because he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Why? One, the Lord is my shepherd. No, no other Lord, the other Lord, he's my shepherd. I shall not want. Why I got wants? Because he can put me apart again more than enough to eat. In green pastures, he just caused me to lie down. That's the rest. In green pastures, and what is it? The things in the green pasture, not the grass. So therefore, if he provides... Uh, and, and guides me to the, to the path of righteousness where I'm lying down in green pastures. It means I got more than enough. So why should I depend on anybody else? I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. When, you all know the saying, still waters run deep, right? That means you could be pulled under when the water looks as calm as ever. Underneath it, there's a disturbance happening. You just can't see it. The disturbance can pull you under. And some of you, everything seems calm now, but that is the still waters. But underneath it, the currents are plenty. They're ready for pulling you down. You don't even know it, including your family and your friends. But what you've got to do is remember that the Lord who is my shepherd causes you to not want and he makes you to lie down in green pastures. Guess where he does lead you? He does lead you. He don't walk beside you. He leadeth me beside. He leads me beside the still waters. He leadeth me here in front of me. While I'm walking with all the stress and everything that looks nice, nice and calm and comfy. And it's under there ready for pull me under and kill me. Yeah, he's leading me then. You got to say that. Declare it of your life. He leadeth me beside still waters. And because my soul would have been shaken. He shall restore my soul. Your soul can't be restored if it was never broken. If it was never let off the path of righteousness. You had to have been a sinner before you became a saint to start working on it. So therefore, after he leads you beside the still waters, he does also do restoration. It has restored you, your hopes, your future, your dreams, your aspirations, all restored. Even though you're big and old, according to some people, and you're thinking this job for 40 years, and then suddenly you, you lose the walk. <laughs> and now you, you got your comfort zone gone totally. Guess what you're in now? Restoration time. Because once you know your season has changed, you will say, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. Cause me to be able to sleep when everybody else um, think that I should be um, up and worried. He restored my soul and causes me to smile when everybody thinks that I'm supposed to be broken. When everything else is falling around me. And I don't know what tomorrow holds but I know that God is there. So therefore I know that he will restore my soul. Yeah America. The new president. Mr. Biden said. We are here to restore the soul of America, which means that America's soul has been broken for too long. I remember, was it 
John Hagee or wherever he named the preaching, he said, if God does not judge America, he has to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, there's a leader, sir, preacher man. I'm not going against what you said, but I'm telling you what God tells me to say. In this day and age, the new president and the lady who has roots from these hearts, right? They're God-fearing people. They understand the importance of family and they make it as clear as day that they are there with God's help to restore the soul of America. It will be the land of the free and the home of the braves all over again. I decree it. I'm a Guyanese, but I just tell you. Any leader who can come and say that they're here to restore the soul of a nation, those are leaders that are on the right track. Not leaders who will say, we are here for every single soul. Yet so many people are now unemployed. So many people didn't get there. What the money name where they supposed to get me again on either. I don't care if you call me a tyrant. I'm living for God and that's what is most important. It doesn't matter. I am human. I do human things. But I also understand the importance of worshipping God in every situation. So for those that went and report all kind of thing about this little thing here. So that they think I'm making millions at. Understand that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let's continue with that particular declaration over your life. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. If your soul didn't need restoration, he wouldn't restore it. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness, which means I have to have been unrighteous. For him to restore my soul and lead me back into the path of righteousness. Why? So that he can get the glory for his name's sake. He is God. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea. That means that even though while I'm serving God, yea, I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Bad things are going to happen all around me, but they will not be able to get me. Because God has put a hedge around me. And he has put a hedge around you. That's because you have a relationship, not a religion with him. And he has caused things to be revealed and exposed in the fullness of time. Right? He did it me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. While he's leading me in the path of righteousness, the valley will be deep. And around it will be death. Yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Which is final. I shall fear. But not evil. Evil can't come near me. Evil can't come near me. Guess why evil can't come near me? Because he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear God, but no evil. To fear God is to revere him, to have a healthy respect for him, and understand that he is the ultimate creator of all things. I shall fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. He's not only leading me, and he's not only my shepherd, he doesn't only walk beside me, he also restored my soul and then he leads me in the path of righteousness that means I have to be unrighteous I keep saying it over and over so it can sink in for his name's sake yeah do I walk to the valley of death and in some cases debt D-E-B-T meaning owing I shall fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod now here it is good and thy staff they comfort me Again, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Do you even understand what that means? At least what God has allowed me to understand is that when the shepherd got a whip, it is called the rod. The rod of correction. And the staff, what are they used for? Both have their place as a shepherd. You got to know when to chase and what? You're stepping off the track. What axe? That's the rod. Too tight lash back in the crowd. And the lashes is not to harm you necessarily, but to remind you that you need to be with the crowd and stop being in that corner or stop veering off because you can get lost. Thy rod was wax. Tight lashes. That's when you get some pressure and you want to know why do to God? You don't do God nothing. Major, you stepped off of the path of righteousness. So he used the rod first to drop two lashes and bring you back in. Pie! 
that means you will step off, even though he's your shepherd. The temptation is there for you to step off, beloved. And so you will. And he will, you will say, Thy rod. Though you're beating me, Lord. I'm taking your legs because it's got to be that I'm doing something wrong. And you want me back in your good graces. Thy rod. That's for legs. Crack the whip and the sheep hear it and run back in the crowd. That's the rod. And the staff is for guidance. This way. This way, that is where the staff, the staff guides. But the rod is the tight lash give up. You're serving God and you wonder why you're getting some tight lashes still. Easy, because you're serving God for people to see. But God knows your heart, your nerve, your sinew, your thoughts, your words, your deeds. So while you might be doing good things in front of people, your heart is nasty. Your thoughts, only God could deliver you from them dirty thoughts and so you're planning you're scheming and everything else so while you're delivered physically spiritually you got another issue me and Alice got it and God has taken the whip and the wax the rod then the staff comforts me that's how the comfort is come you know you gotta get the lashes first and then you realize that these lashes were to get me in the right path that rod and thy staff they comfort me Miss Alison Camacho how you doing and when you don't do all of that, God, I want you to do one thing for me. A preaching like them people was that them big church. No, somebody say preach. And I know, Pastor. When you don't prepare me with all of these things, God, I want you to do something for me next. Show them that you are God. I'm hungry. So prepare a table before me. So that I will not be hungry anymore. Prepare a way for me. So that people will see that I got a way. But don't just do it because I want to do it. Or because I want it done. I want you to do it God in a fancy way. I want my enemies to be able to see what you are doing for me. To the point where you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Prepare that table not just so that I can eat. But so that my enemies can see that I am. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Not just when my family there and when them people who think are nice there. Prepare the table so that those that seem to have an issue with me will be able to. You have a, um, a, a guy here, um, Joshua. Prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. How are you doing? All is well? Okay. Here's the other part I wanted to do, Lord. Now you anoint my head with oil. Well, if you're the shepherd and I'm the sheep, here is sheep story here now. Sister Selassie always reminds me of this one here with the post that she did. See the thing about sheep in real life? Sheep herders know very well, and shepherds know very well, that sometimes they leave the sheep out in the pasture to graze. But they got land in sheep country. And to demarcate the land, they put barbed wires. Sometimes the sheep, because they are, when they don't have anybody to guide them, they run and they prance and they scatter all over the place. And in running so, they run straight into the barbed wire fence. And the barbed wire fence hook them. Bust the head open. And they're stuck there for a bit. They got life. But the barbed wire damaged the head. They're fighting up. And in the barbed wire damaging the head, they got some flies. They got some flies that will ultimately become, make them become the host of their babies. The cut is there, the flies will go land on the head, the sheep can't move. The flies lay the eggs inside of the head and then the babies will grow and the, fly, the babies will eat the sheep out while it is alive, the brain. You understand? Same way as God is your shepherd and you are the sheep. You will end up in entanglements. Yes, a different version of the word entanglement. You end up in entanglement. And your head, boss, whoosh, they're going through. And then the enemy decides, this is a good host. I shall eat on his brain. I shall lay my eggs in his brain. I will have my children suck all that he has in his brain out. And kill him before he actually dies. Hence the shepherd to ensure that the sheep does not get into an entanglement like that. Where the enemy can come and lay eggs in the head. 
Thou anointed my head with oil. It's not regular oil, you know. It's some oil that the shepherd has rubbed on the sheep head. So when the sheep get into the entanglement, the flies them, the oil so bitter, the oil so bitter that the flies will not land on the head and lay eggs inside. In other words, you're asking for the kind of protection that shepherds give to their sheep. So that when your head boss, nobody can come and infiltrate your head. If you didn't know, check out sheep and anointing, anointing of sheep. Why did they put the oil on the sheep head? And people will be like, that's cruelty. No, that's not. That's protection. That's why you say, thou anointed my head with oil. I'm a sheep. I'm about to run loose because I got it going on. So the oil is going to protect me. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup. Yes. God always allows you to have a cup that you can own. Your opportunities, your blessings, they're going to come. And they will be yours to have. Your gifts will make room before, uh, for you and bring you before great men. The word of God says so. But when you take the cup, no, when you got the cup, you cup is you cup. It says my cup. Run it over. Father God, I got the cup here. Full it up. I'm ready for you. When you full it up, however, sometimes it'll start to overflow. Right? You get it through with your stuff? He came to you? Call Joshua. He's looking at after there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming, right? Yeah. Now let's deal with this party. So, my cup run it over. Piece of bottle of water and a cup. I want to do this illustration. Any one of the water, not the smoke, not the bubbly one. Just bring a glass. I gotta show you all this. Now, I'm gonna use a glass, right, for demonstration. But it's not a glass, is the thing. Look, so you got a cup. This is yours. That God has blessed you with your gifts, your talents, and everything else. And it is making room for you and bringing you before great men. To the point where you're getting offers more than you should in your estimation, your understanding. But the reason why God is allowing you to have a cup that is your own, to let you know that you own something. I ain't gonna wet up this place. But, my cup, this is God pouring into your cup. After you pray to before you in the presence of your enemies. And anoint your head with oil. When you don't eat, you just got to drink, right? I ain't going all the way up. I can't let it flow over because I ain't got something here to catch the water. But you see this cup here now. This is your cup. Right? God has blessed you with special things so that you can have. Remember you didn't have days, days when you didn't have nothing at all. God has caused you to have a cup and to fill it up. It's full up. When this cup is full, flies and other insects will come to drink from the cup. To drink from the cup. Here's the situation, however. Your cup will be overflowing to the point that water or whatever it is sleeping over here. What? You gonna get change? Uh huh. Um, I don't have any change. Yeah, drop the arm. Give me the five one time. She so just got bring back the nine. Thank you very much. Bless you. It's not, it's not me friend, ain't it? It's not me under the mask. You're getting fat. God is blessing you. He is. I God blessing you. You need to get rid of it. You just need to control it. That's all. Don't get rid of it. Because that days when you face the hard like concrete, it ain't anymore. Your cup running over. Mm. Your mind is in a better place. Now, back to the cup. So your cup running over and the water coming over here. It can go to waste by landing on the floor here. And insects and everything will come around and drink and eat. It is your duty because it is your cup to protect your cup. If flies come around, shoo. Those are pests. But if a cat or a dog come around, you have to be mindful. Your cup might have pearls in it. And I've been battling with the statement for a while now. Do not give your, your pearls to swines. They do not understand the value of it. Don't give things to people that don't understand the value of it. Because they will treat it like it's a non-entity. It's unimportant to them because they don't understand the value of it. Back to this thing here before I go off on the wrong preaching again. Right? Not for today, but that day in my head now. Do not stop giving your pearls to swines. They don't understand the value of it. Lord, I ain't want to go there. Your cup run it over. So, you decide to share 
from your cup. Do not go into your cup to share. It might seem selfish, but hear me good. To everything there is a reason, a season, and a time under the sun, says the word of God. And your season is one where your cup is overflowing at present. Do not empty your cup. Because as soon as your cup is empty, those that are coming around to drink will be gone. Do not give them anything from inside of your cup. What is coming over the top of the cup, they can have. That is what you can bless people with. But if people got to start coming inside your cup, just know that this cup here will go down, 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 down. Then will be half empty and half full. You'll, you'll be indecisive because you're half empty, you're half full. What the inside the cup is you own? Drink. If you drink and the cup goes empty, it's okay. Guess why? Because you would have used the, the water or what is in the cup to build on this temple that God has given to you. This body. But if you give away from inside your cup, guess what happens? Your cup will go empty and the same pestilence that are around you will disappear when your cup goes empty. They got some of them so greedy around you, they ain't gonna only, right? They only around because you got a cup and because your cup full and because your cup running over, so that they're around you because you're being blessed. So you give them a little blight from here. And they come up here, and they come up here. When they reach here, stop. Please, beloved, stop. They can't get what's inside your cup. It's not for them, it's for you. God wants to sustain you with what is in your cup. Not what is running over your cup. Running over your cup is to help the others around you. Don't be greedy. Anything flow overflowing, share. But don't give away to get over the brim to get inside the cup. Because you'll be without. And it will be your own fault. Hear me good, beloved. They got some who will come and eat from the outside, drink on the inside, and as soon as you blink the teeth, your cup. Which means they come to leave you dry and without a cup. So you're going to starve. If you got a cup, there are opportunities and possibilities for you. But if you ain't got no cup because you allow people to come and take your cup, from you, guess what will happen? You will be cupless. You have nothing to hold anything inside. You did tell God, my cup run it over. And because your cup is running over, goodness and mercy does follow you. Let's go with that now. I'm about to ruffle some feathers, beloved. Your cup run it over. Goodness will come from the most unlikely sources because they want that which you have been given by God. So they will come and they will be noise to you. They will say, this is my friend. And I can have this. And I can have that. And this is my family. So there's nothing that anybody can say. My family will be there for me. That's the goodness and mercy coming right there. But as they say, everything got a reason behind it. And when you examine some of them, who say they will never leave you nor forsake you, they are just there because they are forsaking you till your cup gone. Don't care who say you're liquid and you're greedy. Keck you cup, full it up when God full it up. When God full it up, drink. Empty your blasted cup in your stomach. The reason why God allow your cup to be full that way is so that you'll be able to sustain yourself. But when it's running over, the, the, the excess is so you can help someone along to encourage them, but not to cause them to encourage them to come into your cup, drink out your water, and then when you blink, your cup gone too. So you can't even keep a cup and put outside for get a little juice for drop inside to drink. My cup run it over. Surely, goodness, God's goodness will come when your cup is running over. But the enemy will also bring some what would appear to be goodness to you. Oh, this person is blessing me. Oh, opportunities are coming galore. Not every opportunity is an opportunity. Worth taking. 
everybody does want to give you opportunities when they see you. It's like somebody asked on Facebook the other night, laugh. The dude said, why it is when I was single, nobody didn't want me. And as soon as I get a woman and I say, I am no longer single, all the people them that I didn't want suddenly want me. You know why they want you? Hmm? They want to make your life miserable. They were a happy. They were a happy bunch when you are miserable and lonely. And misery loves company. Somebody say hallelujah. So, I've learned my cup was running over when I was working with the government. And I had so many people, man, one day, man, help my man, help me, this, do this, man, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, And I would try my best. But then I was becoming exhausted. And then something said, hey, you need to stop. But I still went against the voice in my head. And I worked on, worked on. Help everybody, the mother, the grandmother, and even the dog and cat. Not cat, cat. And then when I was no longer employed, the same set of people disappeared. My cop run it over. I am sustaining myself. God has blessed you with the cup and it's running over. Drink. You hear me? Drink. It is for you to drink. Use the running over to give away as an encouragement to others. But anything that passes the brim, going inwards, is you. Anything that passes the brim, going outwards, Share to encourage others. But don't let it come inside the cup. Under no circumstance. From my experience, you can become a leader that bleeds a lot. So the cup ran over. And goodness and mercy started to follow me. And when I gave him a cup, as I gave him a ass shit tree ribs are going that strong. I get ready cup. Man, God will provide more. And then God said, hey, like tell you something. I gave you a cup and you couldn't take care of it. You want me to give you another one? Okay. Go back to the days of not having a cup for a few. You need to experience that all over again because you didn't learn from it. So the cup came and it ran over. Your cup ran it over. Watch out for those that will come with their nice fancy conversations because you're suddenly in the walls of power because you're in, and this is for them ministers, and then people who are managing places and running businesses and so on. Uh, watch out for those people who come in to grant you favors, and those who come in to tea your cup, and those who come in to drink out your cup and so on. Watch out for them. They will be called friends. They will be called family. But look back to the days when you had none and see if you could have found any of them if you didn't find any of them then they shouldn't be part of that which you are drinking from now if it's running over motivate them inspire them encourage them but if it ain't running over don't let them drink from your cup you hear me beloved Goodness and mercy will follow you. Oh my God. I know he's part of the affluent section of society. Suddenly he's important. So everybody wants a piece of him. They want to identify with him. But as soon as he fall out the wagon. Before God take the weapon. Drop to last year. That is the rod and the staff. Everybody gone. You want this get flat. He, he used to have. And I used to take from him. Now he ain't got nothing. Look he walking. Right. Because misery loves company. I said it before and I'll say it again. So guess what happens in the end? Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Once you have your cup, it will be for all the days of your life. And if you continue to do the things that God wants for you to do, my friend even got bigger legs now. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Mary. Your name Mary? Jesus' mother? <laughs> so beloved I say unto you as you're going through 
continue with your keeping your relationship with God because God wants a relationship not a religion with you and in the process don't ever let go of the one that keeps you alive when all else seems like it's going to cause you to die hold the faith and continue to worship replace worry with worship and it might not look like it's changing outside but you're changing on the inside first then you will burst out like a seed from that protective coating and become that seedling ultimately into a plant and then into a tree and you will bear flowers and fruits after your own kind and you will have an inheritance to leave for uh, those that will come after you surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life as i continue to dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen that's enough the lord bless and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may he lift up his countenance upon you and give you the peace that surpasses all understanding bless you Stop worrying and use the same energy to worship. Time to wrap up, right? By the way, we've got lunch today at the Jamrock Cafe, Chef Mandel's Kitchen. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord. <laughs> All the things that you have done for me. Praise for your love, I give you the praise. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord. All the things that you have done for me. I give you the praise. My one, two. Three. Go ahead, count your blessings. Done for me. Oh, he just gave it again. I'm counting my blessings. I can't give it to myself. When God blesses you, don't give it to yourself. When you think that God has done too much, just believe that and just know that he's going to do even more. to you Lord all the things that you have done I'm grateful for your love I give you the prayers it is coming from my heart praise and thanks unto you Lord for all the things that you have done I'm grateful for your love I give you the prayers I'm counting my blessings I just can't give it to myself When I'm taught that you have done too much Oh, Jesus did it again I'm counting my blessings I just can't give it to myself All the things that you have done Oh, Jesus did it again. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm going to shout it out loud. I got life from the mountain top. Uh, I can't keep it to myself. Shouting it loud from the mountain top. Hasn't God been good to you? You're alive, right?
my dance song. I dance and praise the Lord. 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 I shout. I shout and shout and shout. I shout and praise the Lord. Shout and praise the Lord. Done. Oh, oh, Jesus did it again. When I thought that He has done too much, rejoice. Done too much. Oh, Jesus did it again. Oh, oh, shouting loud from the mountain top. I can tell everyone. Oh, I shouted loud from the mountain top. Bless you, are gone. Bye bye. See you all at the kitchen on uh, Church Street. Near to Waterloo Street, we've got all kind of food for you to eat and drink. Come.